It's the 20th month of Prompt Squad, and the prompt for this month was Two-Tone. I know it was a bit confusing for everyone. I mean, I came up with it, and I was confused by what it meant after I was asked some questions. <laughs> but everyone created some gorgeous art despite that, which I'm really looking forward to showing you all towards the end of this video. I'll start with what I made, though which sadly wasn't another fat cat, I'm sorry guys. <laughs> I actually wanted to make something using just black and white for this prompt, which I don't really do too often. I'm too big of a fan of bright colours in my art. I think because it is rarer for me to just stick with black and white, that kind of brought me to think about past Inktobers that I'd done. So I did kind of revisit an older Inktober piece that I did for this one. <laughs> I won't ruin it, but I think me and Tara had a lot of the same ideas when we did this piece. <laughs> I wanted to play with negative space too. With it just being two tones, I messed around a lot with the composition. With it being digital too, I was able to give different elements their own layers, and then I could decide later what I wanted to be light and dark, and play around with it a lot throughout, which had a lot of great benefits to it, and I was able then to decide what would be the most striking. I hadn't really thought about it until <laughs> looking at it now on reflection, but this piece reminds me of two other images. One is the Patronus from Harry Potter, and the other is the forest spirit from Princess Mononoke. When I drew this, I was actually thinking about something completely different. I was thinking about the first time I saw a deer out in the wild. <laughs> and by wild, I mean when I was down in Somerset. They had these herds of wild red deer around there, and you'd just be walking past someone's house just round the town, and then you'd just see this group like, of deers standing in someone's back garden. I thought it was really crazy to be honest, I still do. But the first time I saw them personally was when me and my partner were walking through this forest down there, and suddenly this massive like stag comes jumping out right next to us and just stood there looking at us for a second. It was really big and beautiful, and we were just both standing very, very still and quietly until, you know, it kind of looked at us and walked away <laughs> on its own accord. We were both really nervous that we'd scared it from its, like, baby, so we were both bugged it out of there, you know, no pun intended there, but, um, yeah, that kind of image was so striking and such a shock, it's really stuck with me. And I think images and moments like that in your life, they end up filtering down into your art a lot. And yeah, I feel like my head just revisits those types of images and I want to draw them again and again. I'm sure you guys know how that feels. And I really like how it turned out though. I mean, I think sticking with a limited colour palette forces you to think a lot more about other aspects in your art, like the composition, the textures, the shading. And I'd say if you're looking personally to improve those aspects in your own art, like I am, <laughs> this is a great challenge to do, you know, prompt squad or not, I think it's a really interesting one to do. And with that, let's actually look at how some of the other members of Prompt Squad took on this mum's challenge and what we can learn from them. Dave created this fantastic piece of the Blues Brothers. I did have to check because I recognised the picture, but I wasn't sure if that was the name of it. I do know their faces, but I haven't seen it myself. But I love how he took on the two-tone challenge. Sticking with just one colour in two different shades, I'll be honest, I thought it was going to be near impossible to do. But the idea of drawing the silhouettes and adding those little details so each character is clearly recognisable, 
it's such a brilliant idea and it's such an iconic and strong image that just using one colour really worked well with it. I thought it was brilliant and he's done a brilliant job with it. Far Photos created two pieces for this challenge and both took it in their own kind of personal way with a very similar chord between them. The clash of the red flower against the yellow green of the background makes it so striking to look at and almost 3D. It's such a cool effect and I wouldn't have known that you could do that just using two like contrasting colours. And the second piece uses orange and green, but instead of clashing the two the same way the first one did, Far Photos let them blend around this central clash in the centre of the eye. And again, I think it's very vibrant, but I like how you can see these two different techniques achieve that same prominent feel in the centre of the composition. I just think it's really clever to see and contrast the two. Carter created this wonderful drawn illustration of the old Plague Doctor outfit in black and white tones. I love the creepy feel that they achieve by playing with the line art. It has a really sharp feel to it and very clean and it's also very spooky too which is great seeing as we're going into autumn and towards Halloween. I love that every line feels really considered. It doesn't need loads of shading to it because it's all been achieved by smart line work. I really love this piece. I'm just to say the tea light's back and they created this gorgeous art inspired by a laundromat at night. I love the sharp contrast of the neon blues against the oranges. It feels kind of dreamlike and unreal, like it's a memory of something that's happened a long time ago. And I love the way that they blended and played with the colours too. This piece has so much atmosphere and I think it's really beautiful. It's fantastic work too, like, I love it. Troy also went with black and white. <laughs> He's part of the elite black and white crew like us. <laughs> and he made this lovely memorial piece to the late Chadwick Boseman in pencil. I love the way the texture of the paper comes through in this and that Troy's harnessed that to create these beautiful swirls of shading in pencil and especially on his face. I think pencil portraits are especially difficult to do as the shading has to be really gentle, there's no like sharp contrast in faces. But Troy's achieved that balance perfectly and he's really captured him well. Lisbeth also created two gorgeous pieces for this mom's prompt. She's part of the black and white crew too, <laughs> with her pencil sketch of her now iconic foxes that you'll all know by now. I love the sketchy feel that she achieved with it in just a few minutes too, it feels very alive because of it. Plus she's also made this wonderful sunflower painting that I just love. The textures she made using the acrylics and the palette knife together, they're just fantastic. They really come straight off the canvas, and very strong, like it's growing out from it. And I love that she's done that with such gentle colours too, it looks brilliant. I was especially interested to see Tara's take on this two-tone challenge because she creates so many beautiful blends in her watercolour, she loves to play with colour too but I wasn't disappointed with how she took on such a limited palette because she chose black and white like us and mixed it with this gentle style that she has. It all came together beautifully in her also revisited Inktober character. I love how the background bleeds around it. It feels very magical and atmospheric whilst the character in contrast is in this sharper detail against it. I can't wait to see what Tara will end up doing this Inktober too. I hope they take part in it because Though, to be honest, this is something I'm going to be talking about in a minute. I won't keep going on. <laughs> um, what to say about Emily's one? Uh, I'm not going to lie, it took me a minute to realise it was Spongebob. I thought it was this very abstract piece with patterns of fishnets on it until I realised what it was. I know Emily's expecting me to say, oh I don't like this, it's rubbish, but I think it's brilliant. I love how distorted and trippy it is. The yellow and black are such stark colours contrast against each other that it feels so loud and expressive. I don't know, I, I think it's a really cool take on the prompt personally. I definitely wasn't expecting it in my inbox though. <laughs> and finally, the lovely Nadia also went with colours of yellow and black for her bug beetle. I'm gonna show up how little I know about cars, so please correct me. But I think it's really interesting to see, especially together those two, how different using the same two colours can be. <laughs> Nadia's painting has this fantastic way of really sticking to two sharp tones, like keeping it a lot simpler. And the composition and flow of it is lovely, you notice those two things because of that simplicity. And it kind of makes me think of cutouts or a collage in a lot of ways, but with paints. 
I also think of the show Brum when I look at it, but I think maybe I'm just showing my age by that reference. And that was all the wonderful art created by our members of Prompt Squad this month. I was so excited when I announced this prompt, and I can't get over how varied and gorgeous the art that was created for it has been. I feel like looking through everyone's work, you can learn so much about colour and how many things that you can achieve with just a limited colour palette, especially certain pairs of colours. And I really hope you've also found some artists here that you love. Everyone's links are always down in the description too, so please make sure to check out all our members of Prompt Squad. And this means it's on to next month's prompt, which if you've been in Prompt Squad for a little while now, you might have guessed. It's going to be Inktober 2020. Now, I know there's been a lot of drama around Inktober this year, but wherever you stand on it, I'm sure you can appreciate how wonderful it can be to see artists actually being promoted on social media and the ability to now find new artists there and especially here and on Instagram. They aren't always the easiest to find online. I think that's one of the reasons, you know, that this is such a great, you know, community that you can find other artists and I love Inktober for that and I love this Prompt Squad community because of it. It was born from Inktober around four years ago and every single year, every single Inktober, we've met more artists and we've all become friends through it so I really hope you're looking forward to this year's challenge too, for that reason at least. You know by now we aren't super strict with the rules here. So create anything for any prompt during October. You don't need to follow the main list. Just choose some prompts that inspire you. Even if you just make it up or you follow someone else's, it doesn't really matter, so long as you're happy. And either during or at the end of the month, add the hashtag prompt squad to the piece of art you'd like featured in next month's video and I'll make sure to add it. If you don't want to take part in Inktober this year, that's okay too. But if you would like still to be in prompt squad, try and create a piece of art using ink. It doesn't have to be the only medium, but try and use that medium because I think it'll be a good, like, fun challenge for you to take on. I'm really excited to see what everyone is going to make during this next month. And I hope you'll find even more art friends through it too. Good luck to you guys. I know you're going to create some beautiful art this month. The deadline is going to be the 1st of November, just so you have the entire full month to get on with it. And I'll try to make sure that video is up the first week, fingers crossed. Thank you all so much for taking part in this month's prompt squad again. It's brilliant to see what you all make every month and I hope you all enjoyed it. Good luck again for Inktober and take care of yourselves. I'll chat to you all soon. Bye!